Okay, so this is going to be Carol Middleton, uh, Kate's mom. So I hope you like the video. If you do, please do like it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So here's what's going on here. This is a viewer uh, uh, question about Carol Middleton, and she believes that she never liked Harry and wants to know what's going on now. So we'll see what happens. So I'm trying a new um, video setup. I've got an old Samsung phone, Samsung phone that I'm using to film from the front. I've got another old Samsung phone that I'm filming from the top, which I've been using always. But this one from the front is new, so we'll see how it goes. But I want to tell you about Carol Elizabeth uh, uh, Goldsmith, who became Middleton. She was born in 1955, Carol Elizabeth Goldsmith. And uh, she was born on the 31st of January and is an English businesswoman, the mother of Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, the daughter of she has a daughter named Philippa, and uh, her son is James. Now, her younger brother, uh, Carol's younger brother, is Gary Goldsmith, very controversial, and he's an IT recruitment multimillionaire. And Carol was, and Carol was born at the Paraville uh, Maternity Hospital in London. Let's see, so Carol's uh, maternal great-grandfather was a Durham coal miner named John Harrison. Um, he lived from 1874 to 1956. And then her paternal great-great-grandfather was John Goldsmith, who died in 1888. And he was a laborer, a uh, brickmaker from Hoxton in the east end of London. And now Carol spent her early years in a small house in Southall, uh, attending the local state school. She was educated at state schools before working as a secretary and joined the British Airways working as a ground staff and later a stewardess until her marriage. Now, in 1971, at 16, she initially left school, but was returned, but I mean, she soon returned and achieved four A-levels. I'm nervous about this new camera. Stick with me. Now, although she wanted to be a teacher, uh, Goldsmith's parents, remember she's not Middleton at this point, she's still uh, Goldsmith, Goldsmith's parents couldn't afford to put her through college. So she then worked as a secretary, brushing up on her French. She got a job at British Airways. While working for the airline, she met flight dispatcher Michael Middleton, and he's a and he's actually a grandson of Olive Middleton, who's a member of the Lupton family, described in the city of Leeds archives as being landed gentry, a political and business dynasty. So that was the uh, uh, Luptons. Now in 19... Now in 1980, to get back to Carol the and her husband, the, Carol were, uh, the couple were married at the Church of St. James in Dorney, uh, Buckinghamshire. And they bought a Victorian house in Bradfield, South End, near Reading, uh, Berkshire. In 1984, they moved to actually to Jordan. So, but then in 1986, they returned to West Berkshire and uh, Bradfield uh, South End. 1987, Carol established a company at her kitchen table by making party bags. She distributed thousands of leaflets to advertise locally, and now sells party supplies by mail order. 1989, her husband quit his job at British Airways to join her. And then in 1995, the Middletons purchased Oak. Acre, a Tudor-style manor house in Buckleberry, uh, Berkshire. The firm's growth necessitated moving it to a range of farm buildings, the business that is, at uh, Ashampstead Common, and is reportedly worth $40 million. This is the girl whose parents couldn't afford to send her to college. Now, in 2002, the Middletons paid cash for a flat in Chelsea, London, where their children lived after completing university. The flat was sold in 2018. But in 2011, research revealed that her great-great-grandmother, Jane Little, or maybe it's Lytle, but or maybe it's Lytle, but it's probably Little, who died in 1881, was herself a great-great-granddaughter of Thomas uh, Blackiston, or Blakiston, I'm not sure how this pronounced, Conyers. He was the ninth he was the ninth baronet, from, and he lived from 19, 1731 to 1810, and is a descendant of King Edward IV. 
Now, in 2012, the family, the uh, Middletons, bought Buckleberry Manor in West, like I said, West uh, Berkshire. It was is a Grade Two listed Georgian Manor house, uh, Georgian Manor house, set on over 18 acres, where grandson Philip George, uh, Prince George, spent his first weeks. I'm really messing up a lot today. Just hanging there would be while I get used to this camera. And her first uh, three grandchildren, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis, are third, fourth, and fifth in line to the British uh, throne, respectively. Now, in 2014, it was reported that her great-great-grandfather, Sir Thomas Conyers, shared a direct ancestor with Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Not Queen Elizabeth the Queen, but the Queen Mother. So this is uh, County Durham Sir William uh, Blakiston. And the famous Blakiston Bowes Cabinet, held at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, was created to celebrate the union of the Blakiston Baroness and the Bowles Lion family. Therefore, she is, in fact, a distant cousin of the Queen Mother. And then the last little piece here is that the Middleton's gold chevron on their coat of arms, on, the, on their coat of arms, which was commissioned by her husband Michael, is in reference to Carol's maiden name of Goldsmith. And the wealth uh, is the result of the business and a trust fund inherited from Olive Christiana Middleton, who is Michael Middleton's aristocrat grandmother. Okay, so this uh, deck of cards is very interesting. This is called the Housewives. Tarot, a domestic divination kit with deck and instruction book by Paul Keppel and Jude Buffum. So it's very uh, interesting. It's it's presented in as a uh, recipe box, as you'll see here. So what's neat is that uh, it just harkens back to kind of the 1950s style of, um, of, 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 of how life was, a domestic divination kit. So that's the top. Inside the box, which is a very nice box, by the way, and... Um, it's got so many interesting little sayings on, uh, along the way here. But it uh, looks like recipe cards. The first one here is called the Housewife's Tarot. And if you flip it over, it uh, tells you all about uh, the uh, uh, printer, which is a Quirk uh, company. The second card is labeled the uh, Major Arcana. And when you flip that over, it actually has a real recipe on the back. But the most interesting thing about this, I think, is it says... Uh, for use with a Neapolitan spread, which is a spread that's recommended in the divination book. And it says, eat this cake quickly before your past, present, and future start melting together. Very neat. But that's an actual real recipe. I read through it. Uh, the next thing that you come across, uh, it had stacked in here the Major Ar Arcana. But I've shuffled the cards, so they're all mixed up now. But the Major Arcana were in there. The next uh, uh, recipe uh, card uh, looks like this, and, on the, and this is for the Minor Arcana, which would follow, but this has got another actual recipe. I mean, you can stop this tape, copy this recipe, and bake whatever this is. Well, actually, this is called Divinated Eggs, and it, so it's for like a version of deviled eggs, and it says here, you'll never go back to deviled eggs once you've had them divinated. So very interesting, very nice. Then you had all the uh, Minor Arcana here, the pip cards. And then uh, this third one says the instruction booklet, which is, in fact, right here. And it's yet another recipe. And this is for a martini. And this says uh, for use with the martini spread. And the other one is used for the dinette spread, by the way, on the uh, the last uh, card. But this says Madame Marlena is famous at Bridge uh, for these famous fruity concoctions. Mix up a batch to enhance the effects of the already potent martini spread. Or anytime you need a little pick-me-up, enjoy. And there it is. It's an actual recipe. So very nice, very you know, interesting, fun um, uh, arrangement that these folks have made. And then here in this uh, cool uh, divination book, it just talks a little bit about um, uh, the spreads that they recommend that you can use. The Virgin, the Neapolitan, the Dinette, the Clothes Lines of Life, and the Martini. Uh, then uh, just, I won't read a lot to you, just one paragraph and then a little sentence at the end. It says, according to gossip, Housewife's Tarot was introduced by housewife extraordinaire Marlene Louise Weatherby. Of course, this is all fictional. Uh, in the early 1950s, she was a happy homemaker who seemed to have it all, a devoted husband, obedient children, a sparkling home that was the talk of the town, a fashion sense to die for, and more than her fair share of women's intuition. It goes on to say a lot more of interesting stuff there, but, the, it, but it ends up right here. It says, but just... Uh, how exactly did Marlene acquire this mystical knowledge? Uh, whatever press, she kept her lips sealed tighter than Tupperware. Marlene took her secret to the grave, bless her heart, and the origin of the housewife's terror shall remain shrouded in mystery forevermore. Very nice little book. And so then each of these uh, uh, little uh, full-color book, by the way, uh, pages, talk about how to uh, divide the various cards. Just one of the coolest uh, little uh, packs I've gotten. So the housewife's terror. Now... 
the cards themselves, they've just got a typical back. They're a good uh, weight of paper, and they just feel like normal uh, playing cards. And then you'll see here that the uh, pictures on them are very interesting. Very interesting indeed. One of the things that I have a problem not really a problem, but just uh, that I noticed, is that the number two card in uh, typical uh, cards, and I spread them out like this so people can get a look at them if you don't get a lot of cards, and this is not expensive. I think they were $16. Um, but uh, one of the things, the number two card, which should be the High Priestess, is actually the Empress, and what would be the Empress is the High Priestess. But, I mean, you know, the cards tell you what they are, so it's not too hard to figure out. So if you get if you're doing a reading for someone and you want to get their energy in the cards, this is a great way to do it. Have them do this little mix up. Uh, if they don't want to shuffle, if you don't want them to shuffle, which I particularly wouldn't want someone to shuffle my cards because people typically shuffle uh, pretty heavy handedly. So there you go. It's the um, Housewives Tarot, a domestic divination kit. Love that. I thought these cards were good for uh, Carol Middleton because uh, she, you know, is kind of a housewife and she's doing party gifts. And 1950s is a cool time to think about. And just these cards are a blast to use. And quite frankly, I mean, the subject is that someone suspects, I guess many people maybe suspect, that uh, Carol Middleton was sending information to the newspapers to diss uh, Harry and Meghan because presumably she didn't like them. And um, honestly... I find it hard to believe. This was Laurie Lewicki who says this. So, Laurie, let's see uh, how that looks. But I'll shuffle these up, and we'll see. Carol Middleton, Kate's mom, planting stories anti-Harry and Meghan. Carol Middleton, Kate's, the future queen's mom. Ah, phone calls. Uh, planting stories about... The Sussexes. Very interesting. Lori, where do you get this stuff? Uh, I love you, girl, but come on. So, Carol Middleton, have you been planting stories and have you, are you starting to plant stories again about Harry and Meghan? Carol, anti Harry and Meghan. So, let's see how this works out. Full Celtic Cross eventually, but we'll start with just six cards. So, we've got one, this looks like a tablecloth, doesn't it? An old-fashioned tablecloth. Two, three, four, five. This reminds me of that circus tarot that I have uh, uh, that's so fun to use, just because it's a fun deck. So these six cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, have the signifier for Carol Middleton. Um, have you been planting stories uh, about Harry and Meghan? The signifier card of this is the Queen of Pentacles. Okay, well, you know, I can, I'm can. i going to say that this is Carol Middleton. She has created the fortune that her family now has. It wasn't her husband that did it. It was her. So Queen of Pentacles, this is a woman who's very sure of herself. She knows that she's in charge of her value. And that is Carol Middleton to a T right there, as far as I'm concerned. So, but did you plant stories against Harry and Meghan? Who's this over here? I don't think that's Harry and Meghan. But uh, let's keep that in the back of our mind. The challenge to this Queen of Pentacles for Carol Middleton is the Knight of Wands. Well, that's very interesting because the Knight of Wands is the fighter of the royal suite. You know, he's the guy who's going to take an action and carry it through. Okay, so this knight is going to uh, take this uh, toilet plunger and get something done. Okay, about this uh, situation. So the Knight of Wands actions, the Knight is the fellow who gets things done. So Carol Middleton challenged by the Knight of Wands. Interesting. This could lean towards what you're saying, Lori, or it could be mean that uh, this question is a challenge. Uh, the base of this reading then is the Three of Pentacles, and the Three of Pentacles, oh, this is very interesting because typically the Three of Pentacles is um, working together for some, to create something for public display. And so, I don't know. This could lean your way, Miss Lori. Uh, this uh, queen, who is uh, on the Three of Pentacles, this uh, this uh, woman, who is, of course, the Queen of Pentacles, looks like right here, is building this little uh, situation here, and the public is looking down on it. Um, I don't know, you know? So let's keep on. The past of this reading, then, is the world. So the world are beginnings and endings. Um, could this uh, uh, 
from the past, beginnings and endings. So towards your intuition, Lori, this could mean that there, uh, there was uh, something that was going on that ended and something new started again. Hmm, very interesting. I can't imagine that this woman would take on the royal family. But the sky this reading then is the Empress. Now the Empress is all in charge. I mean, she has everything that she needs to get the thing done. So look, this is a recipe for success, which is Carol Middleton to a T, by the way. And she's assembled everything in front of her, and she's holding it up for the public and advertising, saying, here is my recipe for success. Huh. Still not really a clear answer yet, but there we go. The likely outcome of this first part, then, is the Three of Swords, which is a broken heart. Gosh, Lori, I'm, I still don't want to believe it, but it's leaning your way. So there we are, it's a broken heart. So let's read this part again before we go on to the last four cards. So Carol Middleton, the Queen of Pentacles, is challenged by this Knight of Wands, this fellow who's bringing this toilet plunger in uh, to, um, to get this action done. She's challenged by the Knight of getting an action done. It's underpinned by this Three of Pentacles, which looks like uh, the Queen again over here, uh, Queen Carol, uh, you know, creating this shelf to hold up this value uh, for the public to look at. So, is it even possible? The past of this reading is the world card, which is uh, beginnings and endings. Um, and I'd like to say usually in a grander scale, um, so that certainly fits, my dear. And then the uh, Empress is, uh, is what she would shoot for to be able to hold up her recipes and say, look at what I've got and what it'll make. It's, it's leaning your way. And then the final outcome of this whole thing is heartbreak. And, if, and if, if that is what she did, it certainly did create some of that. Okay, so the last four cards of this, these don't spread very well, I'm finding out. The last four cards of this, uh, the self of that question, Carol Middleton, have you been planting stories about Harry and Meghan? And the Eight of Wands, look at this. This uh, the Eight of Wands is lots of actions, lots of things uh, happening. And this has got <laughs> Carol Middleton on a broom like a witch almost. So that's the self of that question, which could be actually the question. Uh, has she been planning all these action, all these stories? But it's in the environment of what? It's in the environment of the Knight of Pentacles. So the Knight of Pentacles, again, is a warrior, but he's a warrior for value. So he's in the, this is, this, all these actions are in the environment of uh, someone who is, is, is ready to fight for their value. I'm not sure what that means exactly yet. Then the uh, hopes and fears of this are the Hermit. So the Hermit card is typically speaking to, about, uh, to us about someone who is taking a minute to make sure they're confident with what they do before they take the next step. And this hermit is getting herself all dolled up and really preparing herself for whatever uh, is going to happen once she goes out that door, I suppose. So the hopes and the fears of this is the hermit um, uh, card. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing, I'm going to take it from right here, dig way down, is the Ace of Swords. Look at that. And this is a very ominous Ace of Swords. Swords are I like to say truth, justice, and rules. And the Ace of Swords is a great big offer of that, but this is almost ominous. This Ace of Swords doesn't make me think really of truth, justice, and rules. It makes me think of some sort of a getting even. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, Lori, I don't want to agree with this, but the cards seem to lean your way. Okay, so here we go um, with this uh, final roundup, as it were. So we started out, and let me get these cards kind of separated on the table here so that I can uh, pull them up uh, easily and talk about them. It started out as a signifier for this was uh, the Queen of Pentacles, and for me that's Carol Middleton, Queen of Pentacles, making things happen, making some money. Challenged by what? The Knight of Wands, and this could be the Knight who's saying, listen, let's uh, get this dirty stuff going with this toilet plunger here. I'm on my bike and I'm ready to go. Uh, the base of that reading was the Three of Pentacles, which is uh, creating something for public display. Fits. Uh, the past of that reading is the recipe box as the world card, okay? Beginnings and endings, and that would certainly be a beginning, hoping for a not nice ending. Uh, the uh, sky of that reading is the Empress. Again, this looks like Carol holding up her recipe, maybe holding up her little stories to, uh, to uh, give to the press. I don't know. I don't even like saying that. And then the likely outcome of that first part was the Three of Swords, a broken heart. And then we said, what is the self of that question? And the self of the question was, in fact, this um, eight of wands, lots of actions, lots of things coming to pass. And the, ch and the environment that that was in was in this knight of pentacles, someone who's really getting ready to work uh, to make this value uh, move forward. 
okay, to show their worth. And the hopes and the fears was the hermit card, which is the card you always get when you're getting ready to uh, uh, prepare yourself for that next step. And then the final outcome was, in fact, the Ace of Swords. You know, the swords swords are usually truth and justice to me, which they still could be, the Ace of Swords. But this is such an ominous-looking card with that, that devilish-looking uh, knife there. So I don't want to say it, but maybe you're right. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.